Hello again. So over the last few days I've been talking about the five spiritual faculties. So you might remember that those were faith and wisdom, energy, meditation and mindfulness. So I'm going to talk a bit more about um, mindfulness today and I would like to um, apply mindfulness first of all to each of those spiritual faculties. So um, if we take faith for example, I think this has a lot to do in terms of mindfulness with our confidence, our confidence in ourself and our confidence in our potential. So faith is a sort of confidence it's um, not blind belief, but it's confidence that's based on, um, well, our intuition, our experience and our understanding. So that's, um, that's Buddhist faith for you. And we need um, faith in order to have the confidence to persist in mindfulness. Well, we also need wisdom. What is it that we give our wise attention to? Um, so, you know, strictly speaking, you could be mindful about all sorts of very insignificant things that um, weren't going to take you in the direction you want to go in. So, for example, you could mindfully watch a Netflix um, box set and, uh, you know, you might give it your full attention and you might think you were being very mindful, but actually, what does it amount to at the end of the day? So, um, yeah, by studying the Buddhist teachings, by understanding um, reality or how things really are, by finding out more about Buddhism, we can apply um, mindfulness to that, integrate mindfulness with wisdom. And then what about energy? Well, you know, we can't be mindful unless we do apply energy, enthusiasm, interest, curiosity. You know, all that is using our energy um, in a direction that we are wanting to move towards. And then meditation. Well, that speaks for itself because most of us do, at least sometimes, the periods of mindfulness of breathing, mindfulness of breathing. And we know that mindfulness is a training, because we know that when we meditate, although we have the intention to be absorbed in the breath, um, that is more difficult than we imagine at the beginning, when we start to meditate. And it's more difficult because the mind, if you like, has got a mind of its own. The mind pulls us about. We think we own the mind or in charge of the mind, but actually it just um, throws up, um, well, rubbish a lot of the time. You know, things that occur to us, things that are in our mind. Most of what we think is not actually worth thinking about. So mindfulness and meditation are very closely associated. So coming back to um, meditation, mindfulness in meditation. You know how how do we want to um, how do we want to orientate ourselves within meditation? Applying mindfulness. I mean mindfulness is is awareness. It's awareness in the present. So it's very good in meditation to notice how much of our attention, awareness, consciousness is in the present moment and how much is it in the past or the future because that's what's in our mind a lot of the time. Memories, thinking of the past, conversations we've had or making plans, thinking what we're going to do next. In a way, um, when we think about meditating, there's lots of words that actually would equally apply if you just wanted to choose one word. So, for example, meditation is relaxation of a particular sort. It's mindful, med it's mindful relaxation. It's not floppy um, relaxation, you know, it's not settling down and 
snuggling into a um, cosy nest. It's very different to that, but it is a form of relaxation. And the relaxation we're looking for is kind of letting the mind fall into a space of openness, a space of um, letting go, letting go of holding on, but letting go of expectations. And that's really hard because, of course, we have expectations. We wouldn't meditate if we didn't. So, you know, the Buddha said that um, meditation and other practices are the way to end suffering. Well, we've got to try that out for ourselves, haven't we? You know, we don't take the Buddha's word for it. He didn't want us to either. But we um, try it out for ourselves. So we try as far as possible to have no expectations. And I think when we start to meditate, when we first start to meditate, we have loads of expectations. And those expectations lead very often to undermining us, thinking maybe we can't meditate or everybody else in the room, when we are in rooms um, together, um, that everybody else seems very concentrated and calm and we feel really restless and we want to move. And, and so comparison is, an, is another um, enemy of meditation. You know, we don't want to be comparing ourselves. Actually, comparison is, is um, enemy of life, really. It's what we do a lot of the time and, and why we cause ourselves such distress from doing that. So we don't want to be comparing, we don't want to have expectations of certain states of mind or having an empty mind. Um, but we can be present without any of that going on. So we watch thoughts arriving, arising and um, we don't cling on to them. That's the main thing, no clinging. If we don't cling on to any experience within the meditation, nothing at all, not bodily experience or mental experience or emotional experience. If we don't hang on, it'll all pass as everything does. And this is where understanding impermanence is really useful. Because if we really know that nothing lasts, we can allow it. We can, allow, we can enter the flow, if you like, of life. Enter the, the river that just keeps flowing in our experience. I'm reminded of a verse by Dilgo Kiense who says, um, if you know how to leave your thoughts free to dissolve by themselves, they will cross your mind as a bird crosses the sky without leaving any trace. So that's the kind of attitude that we could have in meditation. So, yeah, to meditate, I think we, we need to know how to um, not just relax, but how to be okay with sitting without expecting that every moment of our day has got to be full of activity. You know, we need to learn how to sit back and just be. Be with experience that's coming and going all the time. So, I haven't frozen. I'm just being here with you, now. And I don't know who you are. But if you're still looking at this video, and many of you might have stopped before now, but those of you that are watching it right to the end, let's just be for a moment or two. And we remember to keep breathing. We don't hold our breath. We breathe and we allow ourselves to expand. Allow our mind to fall open into spaciousness. What a delight. to fall into spaciousness.
So, I'm going to leave it there for today. Bye for now.